Welcome to Behind the Scenes at the Hanover Theater. Now, here's your host, Lisa Condit. Good afternoon, everybody, and thanks so much for tuning in today. We love having you join us. And today, I'm very pleased to be speaking with Adam Roseanne. He is the Director of Audience Engagement at the Worcester Art Museum. Welcome, Adam. Well, hi, Lisa. Thanks for having me here. Absolutely. You're one of my favorite woo buddies, as you know. And I, I've seen so much press about the Worcester Art Museum lately and the fabulous new Knights exhibit. And so I just want to hear directly from you. You can share it with our listeners. What's going on over there? Well, it's very exciting. And you and the Hanover are, are our favorite people here as well at the Worcester Art Museum. It has been a really exciting time at the Worcester Art Museum right now. We just recently opened the Knights exhibition which are collections uh, formerly from the Higgins Armory Museum, um, alongside uh, massive works from the Worcester Art Museum's collection, and in doing so, telling a new story of arms and armor, and along the way, introducing contemporary culture with Batman and other really interesting twists that you might not expect from the Arms and Armor exhibition. But excitingly, the press and the response from our visitors has been uh, uh, dynamic. Well, it's amazing because I've heard fabulous feedback from people with kids, too. So talk to us a little bit about what you've been doing as the Director of Audience Engagement to really reach out to new audiences. We are so inspired, I think, in many ways by you all um, at the theater to try to find ways to go engage with family audiences. And we took the beloved mascot from the Higgins, and we brought him over. His name is Helmet. He's a two-year-old dog. And Helmet is now the kind of the voice of the family audience, the voice for children. And now when visitors come to the museum, they see a comic book version of Helmet the Dog who, who speaks to them in the various galleries. And you can read what Helmet says. And in each of the next rooms, uh, each of the rooms of the exhibition, Helmet's there on, wearing some different outfits. And he even has his own room in the exhibition. And he talks to us and he tells us things to do and look for in the exhibition. And it's been really exciting. The response from families has been really uh, tremendous. And people are now coming in and using the museum in ways that we've never envisioned before. And we love it. And we encourage people to come and keep coming back and enjoy their museum experience. And it's all about families. It's all about people coming together and having a nice time inside the museum. Oh, it's awesome. And I love Helmet. He's very cute. And I love the Worcester Art Museum, not just because of the new exhibit, but you mentioned you brought out some of your old masters and you reintroduced those into the gallery. That's right. You know, opportunities for exhibitions bring out our chances to share what you, what you might have, new things that have come in, but it's really about telling stories. And I think that's right. another reason why I work here to, together to talk to one another. It's all about storytelling, and objects are just a great chance to, to tell stories, to engage people, um, because there's exciting things in there. And, and the more you look at art, um, or you, the more you, you think about these things, are the opportunities to tell different stories, get people excited, create new stories, uh, create plays, create uh, musical performances. Um, but these, these works of art, especially the arms and armor, there are so many stories involved, everything from King Arthur to Lancelot. <laughs> um, but there are stories from around the world, and it's really exciting to think about it. And again, it just reminds me so much of all the performances that happen at the Hanover Theater for, for the performing arts. Well, um, it's the similarities are so similar. Well, and it's funny because as you were talking about, you know, you're adding new ways to look at old either items or old stories, but you're bringing a whole fresh new life into not just the museum, but the way that people are looking at the items in the museum. And I think that that's, I think that's such a nice parallel with what you're doing and what the Hanover Theater is doing in, you know, take some of the Broadway tours that come through, okay? Some of them are really classic stories, like, of course, Camelot. Everybody knows the story of Camelot, which I'm very excited that we get to work together. How perfect is that? The Knights in Armor, Sir Lancelot, it's just perfect. But, you know, it's that new twist on it. So a lot of times when I have the opportunity to talk to some of the creative team members for these Broadway tours, they're talking about the new technology that they're using to add a whole new dimension and new life to some of those old favorites. So it's interesting how visual arts and performing arts were really trying to do the same things, and we're just using some of the same tools to achieve that same purpose, but in different ways. That's right. And there's that, there's that responsibility. I mean, audiences now have many more kind of um, outlets for information than they had in the past. And so we need to kind of stay competitive and stay 
to stay up in front of it. So now it's not just to tell stories, but to introduce new technologies in the galleries, to hear different voices. Um, so we are working with many new things for the Worcester Art Museum, including iPads and audio cones um, and interpreters in the gallery spaces to try to find new ways to kind of share some of these things. Uh, we're doing more things with the web and more things with social media than we ever have. Right. And I imagine we'll continue to do so. Right. It's, you know, <laughs> you know as well as I do, new technology, new tools and social media are evolving what seems like every hour of the day. Seems that way, especially (laughs) they need to tell these stories and get the information out there. But it's so exciting to share a work of art or to share a line from a a play or a performance online and see what happens with it. And sometimes what our visitors do online and whether whether they're, they're in Worcester or Massachusetts or anywhere in the world it's so exciting. Oftentimes we have visitors who are making drawings or, or artworks or videos based on things that we're posting on Facebook. And I think that creative spirit is, is more alive than ever. I know, and it's the great. the great thing is that we can share these things. It's terrific. So, you know, you have made a huge impact on the, what seems like a relatively short amount of time at the Worcester Art Museum. Will you tell us just a little bit about what did you do before you came to Worcester? How did you bring this big breath of fresh air and these new ideas to our second largest city in New England. Well, first of all, thank you very much for saying that. It's it's very kind of you, and, you know, it's through great partnerships and relationships like we have and our two organizations have that we're able to do such amazing work. Um, I was very fortunate to come to this amazing uh, city, the city of Worcester, which is now my home, and I truly love it here, from San Francisco, California. But it's really the creative spirit of the city of Worcester that allows for such opportunities to happen. And it's so rewarding to, to be a part of such a community that has so many things going on with some of these great universities and so many amazing uh, uh, visitors and people from all over the country who live here. Right. Um, who have so many different backgrounds. Uh, Worcester is a creative, yes. vibrant uh, city. And to be part of this is to really allow for great opportunities to come through. So all we have to do is really open the doors and provide new opportunities for people to come in. And we've been really lucky and fortunate. And we've been able to introduce new forms of music, new forms of, of kind of entertainment in the galleries, and new ways to look at art. And our hope is that we'll continue to do so. Um, there's going to be some exciting things coming up this summer, some surprises, so please stay tuned. But every day is a new opportunity to welcome a new uh, visitor to an art museum and to show them a work that they may never have seen and learn something about themselves, but maybe even learn something about their, their, their heritage, which is so exciting. It is. So can you tell us a little bit about some of the things that are coming up this summer, or are they all going sure. to be surprises? Well, how about this? Since this is a special phone call, I'm happy to share uh, a secret. We are launching a brand new uh, version of a farmer's market. It's in July, August, and September cool. um, at the museum outside. And awesome. we're going to be calling it Art and Market. The idea is to engage our, our community, our neighbors, with um, an art market where people can come make art, buy some produce, uh, read a book, converse with their neighbors, and just enjoy being a part of this amazing city, an amazing community. Uh, ride their bike over or walk over to the museum. Uh, and participate in the, in, I mean, New England summers are a special thing, so we really wanted to celebrate it. And as we move forward, the museum is, is investing in those, those areas. We're oh, trying to awesome. find new ways to transition our galleries into places where people come and socialize and congregate. We'll be introducing more music and more programs. i um, really excited to be doing family days at the museum and story time, lots of fun things that we're, I think, really borrowing from the other great cultural institutions in the area and at the same time trying to lend a hand and, and support what other institutions are doing because there are so many great um, resources in Worcester. And we Absolutely. are so fortunate to have places like the Hanover Theater and the Worcester Art Museum um, to, to kind of rely on. So this is a place to live, and it's really exciting to be able to participate. Well, absolutely. And one thing that really struck me when I started working in this really terrific city is that spirit of collaboration that you're talking about, really, truly amongst the cultural organizations like the Worcester Art Museum, the Ecotarium, the Hanover Theater, Music Worcester, um, Old Sturbridge Village. And those cultural institutions are all, all part of the cultural coalition. And that was really the force that was behind this Woo card that people are hearing so much about. And that Woo card, that's a cultural passport, basically, to, again, over 70 different organizations that do include museums, but also the restaurants. And it's that spirit of cooperative marketing to bring people in and experience a new Worcester that I think is going to help all of us really move it forward. 
Absolutely. In fact, you know, I just used my Woo card last night, and uh, we're looking at using our Woo card to try to get some uh, good discounts at the Hanover Theater. Right? Woo! That's um, right. Yeah, it's, it's the passport. It's it definitely the, it's like the map of all the things going on in the city. And you know, I'm I'm, I'm pretty eager and getting really competitive with some of my friends to see who's got the most points on their card. <laughs> uh, I don't know if I want to do that competition with you, Lisa, but at some point we, we should say who's got the more points at the end of the year and make it a good contest. Oh, I like it. I like yeah. it a lot. So you know what? We are going to continue this conversation. We're going to talk a lot more about the partnership between the Wistart Museum and the Hanover Theater, especially in the season ahead, a little preview party on May 1st. So everybody stay tuned as we continue the conversation after this break. Now, back to more of Behind the Scenes at the Hanover Theater and your host, Lisa Condon. Welcome back, everybody, as we continue the conversation with the dynamic Director of Audience Engagement, Adam Roseanne from the Worcester Art Museum. Welcome back, Adam. Well, thank you very much. I like being called dynamic. Of I course. I about the Worcester Art Museum being dynamic. I'm just the person who gets to show up and work at this beautiful place every day. <laughs> I feel the same way about the theater, Adam. It's all I don't good. Blame you. It's all good. So we have really had the joy of being able to collaborate quite a bit together lately because of this collaboration between the Worcester Art Museum, the Equitarium, the Hanover Theater through the Woo Card, really targeting families and, like we had talked about, some engagement and m- Geez, coming right up. I can't even believe how quickly it's coming up. May 1st is our big Broadway preview party. And thank you so much for stepping up. We're going to have some really fun, interactive, engaging activities, compliments of the Worcester Art Museum. You want to tell us a little bit about that? Oh, my God. Absolutely. First off, it's an absolute honor and pleasure to be able to participate in this illustrious key moment for your audiences. So first and foremost, when you show up to the Hanover Theater, you're going to be greeted by two members of the Worcester Art Museum's education staff. They will be fully decked out in the finest night regalia. I believe we'll have a, um, a medieval warrior and a Celtic warrior. So two different types of, of, of uh, men and women in armor. It will be really neat, and they'll be greeting visitors coming to the theater. So it's exciting. And later on in the night, surprise, surprise, they will be doing demonstrations, and so your guests will be able to maybe learn a few moves, a few kind of medieval ways to protect yourself, uh, get, your, get to try your hands on some swords, uh, see what, uh, whatever else we can bring out of the storage, and some explanation on what to do and how to move around and chain mail. And certainly, always a fun thing is, is to ask a native question. So you'll be able to talk to people and try things out and even learn a few moves. Oh, How's I, that sound? It sounds completely awesome. And it's really the whole purpose of this preview party on May 1st. Again, it's May 1st from 5 to 7 p.m. at the Hanover Theater. You can find out more information online at thehanovertheater.org. Really, we just want people to get a taste, a little sneak peek of what you can really experience as a subscriber at the theater. And it goes beyond our four walls. It goes beyond our theater. And when you look at our schedule, we have, you know, Joseph the Ama- and the amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat kicking off the series, and we end with Camelot. Camelot is just such a natural tie-in to what you're doing over at the Worcester Art Museum. I'm excited about the promotions that we're going to be able to do to drive people to the Worcester Art Museum and then back to the Hanover Theater, really get more out of both of those experiences. You know, Camelot, it's coming next Mother's Day weekend in 2015, right? So we have a whole year of talking about what it means and marrying the visual and the performing arts together. So this event is just a sneak peek and de- just get your taste buds going so that you can't wait to experience the full new Worcester with that subscription as your touchstone. Because for our subscribers, we do give every subscriber a basic membership. And now part of that basic membership is a free Woo card. And that's where the connections really start to happen. We were talking a little bit at the break about, oh, so think about the time period because theater is about so much more than what's happening on the stage. It goes into all of the background, you know, the history and the culture. And you had some really interesting ideas too, Adam, about how to really get people fired up about the events that are happening at the theater and how they relate to the artwork. Do you want to talk talk about that just a little bit? Oh my gosh. Just imagine. And maybe we should just imagine tonight, but what I think we can do is really get people excited. You know, connecting uh, the actors and, and the audiences in front of these masterworks, you know, 
uh, rehearsing lines with, with, with the staff at the art museum or the theater and practicing for the upcoming shows um, and doing these kind of cross-museum or cross-theater activities. It would be really exciting to practice your flash dance moves in the middle of our lovely galleries. <laughs> practice your, your, your best Camelot uh, sword poses. So lots of opportunities, but you, know, you can't see Camelot if you haven't come to the Worcester Art Museum to practice your, uh, your sword fighting techniques. So right. there's going to be some really good uh, chances there to really kind of connect the two shows together. On, and I think lots of the shows are rooted in, in these, uh, these works of art, whether it's from ancient Egypt to um, contemporary art. There's something for everybody here, and it all comes back to these performances. So it's really the same thing, two different venues. Absolutely, absolutely right. And, you know, just like with literature, you really get so much more out of theater or art when you really understand its context in society and in that time frame. You know, you mentioned flash dance, and some people might say, well, how does flash dance apply to the Worcester Art Museum? The Worcester Art Museum, this world-class, very classical museum, you have some very edgy and modern works in there. And I love when you bring in the totally modern photography exhibits and some of the mass culture. So do you have anything, if people are really stuck in the 80s, Adam, where would you suggest they go? You know, I gotta say, I, my understanding is flash dance is one of the great. Oh yeah, and I think it belongs in the same uh, conversation as Monet, El Greco, Monet, Degas, and then there's flash dance. <laughs> so I don't think we should overlook it. I think it's about appreciating all the various forms of art out there and celebrating, um, you know, painting and sculpture and photography and dance and spoken word and song. And, and thinking that there's not one way to celebrate art, but lots of ways. And again, it kind of talks about the, the, the beauty of Worcester, but the beauty of, of seeing a performance and, and getting so excited that you want to understand a little bit more about its, its history and its origins and the stories that made up that performance of hair or flash dance. I mean, those stories aren't new. They, they, they come from somewhere. You know, Joseph and the Technicolor Dreamcoat, that comes from somewhere. And that's one of the reasons why you come to an art museum, to see the origins of those stories. And Camelot, well, you know, you, you only have to go to the next exhibition. But for every one of those performances that you have next year, and it is a great lineup, all you have to do is come to the Worcester Art Museum and journey through one of the galleries, and you can understand the history of those performances. So tell us a little bit about some of the types of work you have in your Ancient Egypt exhibit. Well, the ancient Egypt exhibit is always a classic to see some of those great pieces. We have a little uh, mummy, and there's some other really fun things, uh, um, um, kind of um, artifacts from, from Egypt, and it's a chance to kind of see and learn, learn a little bit more about a culture that's no longer here with us. But really, part of the, being an encyclopedic art museum is that we have something for everybody, and we tell the story of humanity through all the very different ages. Um, so I like to kind of wander around the galleries and, and make my own comparisons, looking at one culture to another culture and looking at the portrait of one person uh, compared to another portrait in a very different gallery. And sometimes I learn so many things from those, uh, those moments of just thinking to myself what I can learn on my own. And then I pop into a lecture, I pop into a docent tour, and I learn something even more. Oh, that's awesome. So do you have a lot of lectures and do you have a regular tour schedule at the There's Art Museum? We do. There's something happening here every day of the week. And there's something here for everyone, from uh, docent tours and lectures to studio classes, to, to uh, paint making, to there's something for everybody, to parties. Um, there's something for everybody, and there's something happening here every day of the week at the Worcester Art Museum. Ooh. And by the way, I have to say, I love having my membership at the Worcester Art Museum, and the parties that you guys throw are phenomenal. So if anybody wants any more information about the Worcester Art Museum, what should they do, Adam? They should just go to the website. Worcesterart.org, and or come over and visit, and you can learn more when you come here. And I also love to say that I love my membership at the Hanover Theater yeah. for Performing <laughs> Arts. Uh, it was the first thing I did when I moved to Worcester was get a membership, and I got to tell you, I'm often there. You know, I I love those performances, and missing them is 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 a, is a crime. So you got to go, and you got to go often to the Hanover Theater. And then you got to come to the Worcester Art Museum because you got to study up to learn a little bit more about the performances that you're seeing. Right. And so one of the things that people need to do is they need to stay in touch with us on Facebook, through our websites, through our oh, other yeah. social media channels. Email. Yep, email, because we are going to be announcing more collaborations, more um, promotions together so that really you can connect the Worcester Art Museum with the Hanover Theater and 
like you said, there's something for everyone at both of our institutions, and not just families, but also people in every generation. What I love about both of our institutions is that we are totally not just appropriate, but magical for people of all ages. We are both a great place to take (laughs) anybody from really a child who is open to beauty and art and experience all the way to our great grandmothers because everybody appreciates what they can find absolutely absolutely i couldn't have said it better myself in fact i won't Ah. you just said it um there's a lot going on and stay connected and follow us online and, and you'll hear all about what's going on at the museum and the theater and i think it's uh onwards and uppers and collaborations all the way and get ready and get excited for Camelot, but you've got to become a member of the two organizations to see this amazing thing. Absolutely. And really, our subscribers just have to put it out there that you want to come to the preview party because our subscribers, they get the best seats in the house for all of our most popular shows. Not only that, but each subscriber can now save between 94 and 112 dollars wow. per person right because our subscriptions come with that basic membership and that basic woo card. So, What more do you need? You need to come on May 1st. Come and visit Adam and me and all of the knights and the cast of characters, and we are going to have a great time. We'll see you all at the theater. Adam, thank you for talking with us today. We're looking forward to working with you, and you have a great day. Thank you. You too. Bye, everybody.